What is going on guys? So today I'm going to talk to you about why you should not enlist and instead just become an officer in the army. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying I do not think that everybody in the military should become an officer just like I do not think that everybody in general should join the military. There are some people who are cut out for it. There are some people who it just doesn't fit their personality type. But you know, I'm going to in this video talk to you a little bit about, you know, why you should actually just become an officer, especially if you think it might be something that you want to do. Now we'll be doing a video later on why you should not become an officer, so keep that stuff in mind guys. Don't be hating on me for, try for trying to convince some people to become an officer. But, you know, just right out the gate, you know, I'm going to talk about this because it is a true statement. It is one of the reasons why a lot of people switch over to becoming an officer so late in their career. And that is because officers just get paid more, right? There's a lot of reasons why officers do get paid more, but that is definitely just a sheer fact. Whenever you come in as a fresh second lieutenant into the United States Army, your pay is basically equal to like an E7 or an E6, depending on how many years of service they have in. So as far as the pay goes, you're kind of coming in way higher up on the, the pay ladder or whatever you want to call it, you know, whenever you come in as an officer. So that, again, like I said, that's one of the reasons why people will switch from enlisted to officer later on in their careers because of the retirement pay. Your retirement pay is dependent on what rank you were whenever you retire, right? So if you're like an E6, a lot of times those E6s or even E7s will switch over to an officer be an officer for a little bit, make it to like the rank of captain, which is 03, and then retire because the pay benefits whenever you retire is gonna be a lot, a lot higher. Now, one of the other reasons that you might wanna become an officer is because you actually kinda of give orders a little bit more than you take orders. Just kinda of by the nature of being an officer, there's not as many people who are telling you exactly what to do. You might have your commander or XO or something like that, or even a step above that kinda of telling you what to do indirectly. But for the most part, an officer, you're kinda of planning things out. You are going to be shaping the situation a little bit more in order to meet the commander's intent. And by doing that, you are going to to be telling a lot of people what to do to get things done, right? So you're gonna have some NCOs below you. You're gonna let them know what you want them to do. You're gonna let them know what the commander's intent is. You're gonna let them know, you know, all the things that kind of need to be done. Then you're gonna let the, the enlisted soldiers kind of take it away. And then if you're at the bottom of that totem pole on the enlisted side, all you're really gonna be doing if you're like E1 to E4, the majority of the time is just taking orders all the time. So for officers, just kind of like straight out the gate, you, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning. I'm right now in that area. I'm a second lieutenant. But at the very beginning, when you become an officer, they're kind of throwing things at you and you have to make a little bit more decisions on your own. You actually have much more control than when you're enlisted and you really feel like you have absolutely no control at all. So when you're an officer, to make it short, sweet, and to the point, you give orders more than you take orders. Now I hit on this next one just a little bit on the previous point that I made, and that is that you can control the situation a lot more whenever you're an officer. Again, straight out the gate, you're a second lieutenant, you have a lot more control over the situation. Obviously second lieutenants don't have as much control as even higher ranking officers, but when you're on the enlisted side, especially the lower ranking side of the enlisted soldiers, you don't really have that much control of the situation at all. Again, you're being told what to do constantly and it's not like really bad like oh do this do this do this do this but it's just like you're just the product of all of these decisions you are the product and you have to do the decisions of all the people who are above you right a little higher into the nco ranks once you reach e6 e7 e8 especially e9 you are going to be making more decisions but at the end of the day it is going to be the officers who are really mapping out the the plan right so they're the ones creating the plan and the enlisted soldiers are really kind of the ones acting it out now officers are really the ones that are creating the plan. They're creating the environment, the situation in which they think is going to best meet the commander's intent. And I've said that a few times in this video, commander's intent, all that really means guys is as an officer, you have a mission. And in that mission, the commander above you has an intent. He has something that needs to be the, his main goal, his main objective for that mission, right? 
And then as you're passing all of those orders down as officers, you are going to have your own intent, right? So as a platoon leader, as some second lieutenant or whatever, you're gonna have some intent that you want your platoon to actually accomplish. The high up goal could be to like just destroy the enemy. That is the commander's intent. Whichever, whichever means, whichever way you want to actually destroy the enemy, you can do it. But as long as it meets that intent, as long as it meets that commander's intent, you're good to go. Officers are the ones that kind of shape that. They, they kind of shape the plan, the route that they want to do in order to meet that commander's intent. So they, like I said, control the situation a little bit more. Now one reason that you really might want to become an officer, and this is it's something that I really enjoy about being an officer, is you got less crappy busy work that you have to do. Enlisted soldiers, again, especially lower enlisted soldiers, because that's only that's the only experience I have as far as enlisted goes. I made it up to E4, then switched it over to the officer side. And enlisted soldiers, a lot of times, you're kind of just doing busy work because you might not have much else to actually do. As an officer, you have things to do all the time. Something that I quickly learned out as officers, you've got a lot on your plate that you need to do. You got a lot of things that you need to plan out. You got a lot of problems that you need to solve. And so you're always busy kind of doing all that stuff. Enlist soldiers, on the other hand, sometimes they accomplish their tasks, they do their task, and then they don't really have anything else to do because the officer is kind of trying to figure out everything, they're trying to do stuff, and then once they figure things out, then they pass it along. But in the meantime, a lot of times, you might be doing busy work as an enlisted soldier, whereas for the officer, you're, in a way, doing things that matter, if that makes sense. Not that enlisted soldiers don't do things that matter, I'm just saying, like, you're, as an officer, kind of always doing things, and then on the enlisted side, sometimes you might just be doing busy work that doesn't really matter that much. Now the other nice thing about being an officer is most of the time if there is a better living condition or a better situation for officers to be in, they're going to get that preference, which is something that's really nice. It's something that's kind of weird, again, especially coming from in lower enlisted. It's just weird, like just in very basic circumstances. It's just like officers, you know, if there was a, a choice, right? Officer gets the bed or enlisted soldier gets the, the floor or whatever to sleep outside. To super, super simplify it, if there's, you know, an officer and an enlisted soldier and then there's a good living condition and a bad living condition and you have to pick which one's gonna get the good one, nine times out of 10, the officers are going to get the better living conditions. They're gonna get the better freedoms, the better things like that. Whenever it comes to the enlisted side of things, you're gonna kind of be stuck out in the rain on that. And sometimes that could be literal. Now, two things that I'm gonna mention having to do with freedom in the military, which is something that I really enjoy about the whole officer side of thing is, number one, you get a little bit more freedom to actually do what you want to do. You get more freedom to actually, hey, this is a, a job that needs to be done. I can kind of solve this however I want to do it, right? As long as it, again, meets the commander's intent, you can solve it however you want. On the enlisted side, you don't really have the freedom to always think outside the box all the times or go outside of your commander's intent, which would be the officer above your commander's intent. Again, officers, you get that commander's intent handed down, and then you kind of decide your own way of how you're going to accomplish your little mission and then you pass that down and then you have your own little commander's intent if that makes sense but you know again officers you got your kind of freedom to kind of figure it out however you want on the enlisted side sometimes you don't have that you just figure it out how you're told to figure it out if that makes sense now the other thing that has to do with freedom which again, I really enjoy because it's just nice not to be scared to talk to some people. It's a little bit weird when you get to the super high up officer ranks because again, I'm just a second lieutenant, but kind of feeling more free to talk to people that are a higher rank than you is nice. Lower enlisted soldiers sometimes are kind of freaked out to talk to officers or high ranking NCOs. Then you go and switch over to the officer side and this is something that I kind of think is weird and appreciate and it's just something that I don't see in other people who were not prior enlisted officers. And that is, you know, talking to a captain, you know, is a lot easier. You don't feel scared to go up and talk to a captain as you do if you were like an E4, some specialist or something like that, just going up and talk to a soldier who's a higher rank, th rank than you. It's a lot easier. You kind of have that freedom to go around and talk to whoever you want. You could talk to lower enlisted soldiers. You can talk to NCOs and it's just nice. Now the last thing that I want to mention, which could be a good thing, I think it's a good thing, is that you just get more responsibility 
early on in your military career. I mentioned this just a little bit earlier, you know, you get to shape the situation, things like that. But as far as responsibilities being thrown on you and not kind of just sitting there twiddling your thumb and thumbs and everything like that, like that is nice, especially for me, you know, enlisted soldiers, you don't really have that much responsibility thrown. You're not really kind of left to think for yourself that much. You're already thought for in some situations, whereas on the officer side, as soon as you join, and I talked about it with my first drill in the reserves, like as soon as I got to drill, you know, I was kind of thrown these different things. Hey, you're gonna be in charge of this. You're gonna be in charge of this. This is something that we want you to do. This is something whenever you go to bulk, we wanna make sure you get this un this understood so that when you come back, you can help with this, 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 and this, this, right? So officers, as soon as you become one, you got all these responsibilities. I think it's a good thing. And listen, soldier, sometimes you're kind of wanting to do something. You're kind of wanting to be in charge of something, not, you know, in charge of stupid stuff because nobody wants to be in charge of something stupid. But getting that responsibility early on in your military career is nice. Now that's gonna be it for this video. I do wanna say here that I'm not trying to make this video to really convince anybody being an officer. I'm not trying to make this video to say, oh, officers are better than everybody else. All oh, officers are better than enlisted. All oh, officers, you know, actually do things that matter. Enlisted soldiers don't, things like that. That's not what the purpose of this video was. The purpose of this video was just kinda tell you some of the good things about being an officer. And yes, you know, sometimes officers, you're kinda just doing stuff all the time that matters. And then on the enlisted side, sometimes, you don't have that much to do and then you do things that don't matter because you need to look busy for the sergeant major or for your company commander and guys it happens all the time you got some high ranking soldier coming through and then all of a sudden you just gotta look busy and you do stupid work for the entire day or something like that right so um officers got a lot of pros to it got a lot of pros to it right but it's also got some cons and I will talk about that and I will talk about why you should enlist instead of becoming an officer in a future video. So you guys should stick around for that by hitting subscribe. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did hit that like button, that'd be awesome. If you wanna stick around for some more of my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss it. I'm just saying, you don't wanna miss it. And really, if you really, really don't wanna miss it, hit the notification bell button. That would be freaking amazing. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. If you haven't already, hope you guys have an amazing freaking day. And I will see you later. Drop.